Hello everyone, Michael Eldridge here, that's me. We are taking a brief look at Claustrophobia, the original edition from something like 10 years ago, and the sequel slash partial reboot remake, second edition, not called that, simply called Claustrophobia 1634. This is a casual video, it's not that planned out, I'm just using my phone here, and we are just comparing chiefly the components you will hear a cute cat meowing he wants me to play with him some more so first let's look at hey buddy no first let's take a look at the actual box art for each of them here we have in the original the first thing that's quite obvious is just how much more colorful it is and uh for me this is going to be an ongoing theme with this comparison uh, i've said to folks that i immediately like some of the streamlined mechanistic uh, changes in the new version but the color differences between this old version here and the new version of claustrophobia which is much more muted much more subdued and uh, equally as realistic in its fantasy art style but as we'll see with other other bits it is a uh, it's more realistic than other components of the game. So the th thickness of the game, you'll just, you see straight off the bat here, this is a much heftier game. The new version comes with a lot more stuff than the old version in terms of sheer weight. So here we're taking a look at the old edition. <clears throat> and the first thing I want to look at is actually just the, the room tiles. The dungeon tiles in the caverns underneath New Jerusalem. A little bit of the color. I'm sorry, I'm gonna have to move you, honey. No, off, off, please. Thank you. We're just taking a look at some of them. Now, it's important to note that I do have mixed in both expansions, but the general graphic design, style, component quality for the expansions to the first edition of Claustrophobia are equal to the new version. One thing that's noteworthy is the kind of light brown color and just how uh, colorful it is. So It's also noteworthy that this game, I've always felt, is too much of a table hog. Is it cool that the tiles are this big? Definitely. Is it necessary no it's not they could be the size of betrayal at house on the hill would that be as cool no maybe not but this game is strangely one of the only games that ends up being quite difficult to actually make it onto the table without spilling off and needing auxiliary tables now i have a smaller table here and i have more tables rather than one large one and other people don't have that problem but it is strange for a two-player fairly light in terms of um, sheer weight of difficulty to understand the rules for such a game to have a problem with being not able to fit on on a table very um, very likely. It makes it so the game is not a good travel game, whereas many two-player games of similar weight could be. I mean, even Betrayal of House on the Hill is not that hard to travel with, whereas this, you have to make sure you're going to a place with the right, the right table. All right, let's knock all this off. Oh. Uh. Now, let's take a look at the character dashboards. Now, these are, these are the cool warrior dashboards. Here we have a uh, one of the warrior women, the uh, Sicaria, from the first expansion. Here we have a condemned blade for hire, now called a condemned scout. The condemned brutes are still called as such. And now is, here's where we see more fantasy style art. Well, uh, excuse me, where it's less fantasy realism and more slightly cartoony, which again, I don't mind. I think is kind of cool, kind of works for this, but clearly it's more of kind of a maybe an old-fashioned comic book style. Now we still have a dashboard where it displays, you put in the die, and that result yields 
these stats for that round, you know, movement, combat, and defense. One major difference between the new game and the old game, as we'll see, is less usage and reliance on iconography in the old version, and more usage of iconography in the second version. Now, let me also add that uh, the dice in the original are pretty plain, and they're made to be so that the ac action dice for the demon player, for the warriors, for the humans, for... Oops. So they could be used for any of these purposes. So that dice are dice, as long as they fit into these slots. And it is cool that they have this kind of uh, thickness. It's actually unnecessary for them to be this thick. But it's cool, and it's nice that they're relatively small in a game that otherwise, even in the original, is taking up too much. If you have five warriors, you just right off the bat need this much space in order to um, in order to, to to see all of them and have their their dashboards here. So let's look at some of the miscellaneous bits. I've organized them here into into this tray. Here are the wound markers. I'm uh, just keeping these in mind that. It's cool that they fit into these slots in such a way that they're not falling out ever. They can't be dashed around, they can't be knocked around, and same with same with the dice. Like this is there it goes. But apart from shaking it outright and falling over, it's basically really stable and solid, and this is something that more games should learn to be like. Now does it need to be this uh thick in terms of to do that probably not but it's a nice size for these so we have some additional threat tokens because of the second expansion but for the first expansion the threat tokens just look like these kind of plain pieces they're not represented through anything cool or shiny or materia or like three-dimensional in any way they're just these bits, and these will go onto the the demon player's board. So this is the first edition demon player board. Let's um, begin to start taking out some of the components now that we have a good introduction of what we see in the first edition. This is where the differences start to lie. Here is the second edition demon dashboard um, board of destiny so one comparison that people have noted is that we simply have more options with the old version yeah it's, it's significant it's it's a full it's a it's a It's a host of them, but with the new version, you have you basically have eight instead of ten. Now, I actually don't mind this too much. A lot of people have disliked this, but the loss of the um, of uh, I suppose it's a uh, trap and the loss of uh, resistance is futile. I don't actually. I don't actually mind that. The and the other the other elements are essentially the same. Supernatural speed, exactly the same. Now something that is different and it's a meaningful difference is that in the the second edition, in sixteen thirty four, what we're meant to do is slot our destiny dice. Sorry about that. We roll them. And you'll roll. You'll roll three in a given time. But there's more. But there's six in total. There's there's more here. Here's another one. For, uh, and instead of going by things like odd or even scores, 
as what matters. It's meant to go by red or white as being the two, the two basic kinds of differences. And so, um, you know, I think it's one through three, and then each of the one there's a red one and a white one. Whereas instead of one through six, then distinguishing odd versus even. The reason this matters is just that it's just a different way of describing the same thing. That with abysmal threat, for example, uh, this is where you will be drawing an event card. Um, now, with Dark Destiny, you would draw an event card. Uh, oh, no, sorry, forgive me. So, yeah, Dark Destiny is the same, that what you do is uh, you're drawing an event card for every die that you put there, but it has to have three or more. Whereas over here, you simply have to put in one die, and then you would draw that many according to the value, and then you pick the one you want. So a higher value simply means more to choose from, but it doesn't mean more total event cards. So there's little subtle differences like that. Uh, there isn't a calm before the storm in the new version where you roll an extra die of destiny, but now there's kind of a new mechanism in the sense that we have these placement areas above. But let's say you, um, you don't have enough to trigger one. So let's say this one with frenzied creatures that gives all of your troglodytes frenzied so they could reroll missed hits once. So if you go here and uh, you need two red dice to activate this, to trigger it, and when you trigger it, they all slide down. But on this turn, you didn't have enough to roll them. Well, in the next round, the next uh, turn, you would roll three again. So let's say I had three here, and um, then of those, of those three, I know that I only showed two here, you would have it then, you could do it. So you can save up a little bit if it's a partial not quite enough to give you the value you need, A plus, 7 plus, or over here, two red dice or two white dice, or as many of one or the other, red or white as possible. Of the six dice it gives you, even though you're only rolling three each, and therefore you can kind of build up or plan a little bit. So that's basically represented through that mechanism. So the calm before the storm, I don't mind that we're missing that for that reason. And um, resistance is futile and trap going away. I actually don't think we have to have that. And this board, it's hard to say which one, they're similar in space. This one protrudes a little bit farther down. So as far as being a table hog, it's hard to say that the second edition is a huge improvement over this one. But one thing that I do like is, I, I just like explanations more than iconography, I think. I admire iconography more, so for instance, this um, this tells you what phase, that's an icon that shows you what phase it applies to or during. This means, is the icon for movement, plus one movement. Um, that's the icon for frenzy, and then that's used throughout. So there's a consistency with the iconography. This has to do with um, the enemy movement. Uh, the enemies. So it's saying if there are enemies on this t tile, you can summon, and that's kind of the summoning indicator icon, even if you're on the same tile as, as human warriors. And normally you can't summon where there are human warriors, but Intrepid Charge, that restriction goes away. But I kind of would just like if they just kind of said as such, like, just described it with burrowing burrowing monsters which i think is the same as intrepid charge um basically so but that's all right and these icons as well as to who it affects so intrepid charge affects uh tough troglodytes i think uh the demon and troglodyte demon and hellhound uh it's see that's the problem is i have to remember which is which so frenzy creature that's the troglodyte symbol so it makes all your troglodytes have that effect so you start to learn the iconography, but it just kind of is like, it, does that is that helping in the long run to use icons? This is showing that we're the the, the demon player and troglodytes are our main thing, and and these aren't hard to figure out. That it takes three to hit these guys. Each troglodyte has one health, 
they each roll one combat die and they each have one base movement and that's all right and this is a cool spot for for your threat and again in the first edition it's just threat like this so here's where it's quite different when it comes to the player boards for the human warriors if you have five people this is the only real difference where it's much more of a table hog if anyone thinks that the first edition is not going to be a big table hog, it, it still is. It still is kind of a problem. Don't get me wrong, I love the first edition, and I'm actually extremely excited about the second edition, even though this sounds like, so far, like I'm being more critical about it. But uh, these dice that are used for the, the Board of Destiny, they're used for the heroes, and they're used during combat. Well, now we have, in the second edition, and this is just a huge upgrade, dedicated you know dark destiny dice dedicated bad guy activation dice we have dedicated heroic dice uh, for activation and you would roll as many as you have warriors and then place them out how you want so okay I want my condemned brute to go to be activated for one and I want my guardian to be activated for two. Awesome. So, this is cool. The art is awesome and cool. Less cartoony, which is both, in my view, good and bad. I, in some ways, I like the old cartoony style for giving it more color and uniqueness, but this version feels more BA, more awesome in some regards. But uh, we basically still have the same indicator of, you know, movement, combat, and uh, amount required to hit them. So that is very, very cool. Something that is new mechanistically is these slots here showing that this is what will give you an instinct card. Humans used to have lots of different cards representing lots of different things in the first edition, such as you know, gift cards or for the female warriors, uh, they were kind of skill cards. Now many of those things are represented through chips and chits and elements like that. And much of the cards have been combined together, including advantage cards, all lumped together as instinct cards. So another good thing about the second edition is that we're getting these female warriors right off the bat and they're they're unique immediately they have a different special ability she's frantic just like the troglodytes can sometimes become where she can re-roll miss dice and she uh ignores the first hit i think each time or each turn or it's pretty often but it's too bad that again with iconography there's nothing even if it would be cool if it was underneath the parchment so that you could get it but because they're making this less language dependent it's a shame a little bit because what if some, you know, it's not obvious until you know that that means frenzied. And it takes just as long to learn that icon means frenzied um, and you re-roll missed hits as it does to see the, you know, to learn the icon. Uh, uh, or just to remember that she has that ability. Same with this one, ignoring damage. But I think perhaps over time, as there's more and more characters or as you play more scenarios, maybe it will be worth it. So... Uh, impressive and bodyguard are the two abilities now on the condemned brute it just said bodyguard and impressive but now we know the. in this case it still didn't explain the rules though either but in some way the ways the word is easier to remember the rule by because it's descriptive I suppose an image is descriptive too but the, it's harder to make things obvious through the iconography in my opinion so impressive means that you can force target uh, hits that would um, uh, they, it, it stops people from leaving the same tile as you, even if you uh, even if they would outnumber you normally. So you can kind of block people from leaving, enemies from leaving. And bodyguard means that you can assign hits that were given to other people to you. You can be a meat shield. You can be blocking it. So 
it's just up to you whether you like that more. But this is really where the difference is in table space. It's basically two, not quite three, just the way it's laid out, but it may as well be three of these to make one hero board. This is really the biggest difference in table space is the the hero boards and you're going to have three four or five of them in a given scenario so you just you're going to need a side table or a very large table and here we have the redeemer and i do think that it's a little bit of a mistake even if you can use this art area to hold your cards you're still running into that into that issue now uh something that's very very cool is that with the new edition Uh, for threat tokens for for the evil side instead of just these uh, these simple threat tokens we're represented by this materia and that's very beautiful and that comes in denominations as well and of course that is made to be stored in this little thing here now you can store anything anywhere you want basically but it's nice that there's a dedicated spot, but it's not as though it's doubling up the purpose of something. This is space that otherwise wouldn't have, would just be free table space, so you're not necessarily doing us any favors. But it's cool. The material is just awesome. That's a great, great uh, inclusion, I think. Also, just as there were dedicated good guy dice, dedicated bad guy dice, there are ten and I don't think you're ever rolling more than five at a time, pretty much. Uh, dedicated combat dice. Where they're thicker, they're bigger, they look really cool. And the six is a skull, which is smart because no matter how much armor, items, or whatever, a six always does a hit, is my understanding. So you know it's an instant hit. Uh, then the others will hit depending on if they're equal to or greater than the armor value of the person you're fighting, of enemy, regardless of what side you're on. And there's just, you don't have to pass them, there's enough for both sides. Now, another big difference is in the old version, our tokens are cooler. They just are. Our little chips and things, to the extent we're using this one, we know it's, it's a blessing thing. You give it to somebody, they get plus two combat, or on the inverse side, plus one movement. Obvious, cool, colorful, Fantastic. The old version just has cooler, more colorful chits. This is a, a whole opening. This means that it connects to another one of these or to uh, a tile that has this. The troglodytes can go between them. Super cool, super awesome. And expansion ones have stuff for the expansion too that's also equally cool. Likewise, this is for a treasure token, nice, colorful, love it. Some of these are smaller than I would like them to be, considering how big the tiles are. This is the old edition, that's really tiny, but it does its purpose. The old edition's bits would be a runaway success compared to the new version if they were larger, but being that small, other than these ones as mysteriously larger when they didn't need to be that much different in size. There's a turn tracking die, which can count the number of rounds. And you can use it, you can put it on the edge of a tile to show the direction it's going in. Whereas with the new edition, the back of each tile is meant as such that there's a turn tracker marker. You put it on each of these and it'll track along. Either are just as cool, I think, getting to those. So the dashboards aren't as good for um, being t saving space on the table. They don't do that at all. They're doing you no favors. They're less thick, so I don't know if that helps storage or not. It's an overall bigger game. The wound markers are just way cooler and better. These little skulls, I don't know if my camera can focus right on them. But they're these awesome little skulls. And troglodytes die in one hit, typically. 
but your heroes, as well as the big demons, they'll take up hits. And then, of course, if you ever do an activation marker here, in the first edition, you had to remember that if your guy is exhausted, meaning that you place the die in that spot, and he had a wound there, then that's hero was exhausted for this round. And to mark as such, you would put this right here to remind you. Now, you don't need this, really. It's in the rules, but it's helpful. It's good. It reminds you that if you put one there, regardless of what the stats are, if you use an activation line, there's no movement, does not fight, and only three to hit, and you can't, uh, I guess... I don't know what those are, again, because it's, that's the problem we have with that, is that we don't, we don't know what these mean until we learn them. So, those were the old, uh, chits and tokens up there. Now here's the new ones. Consistent iconography. So that's cool, I like that. I like the consistency element. I don't like that they seem more sterile, we're not, we are just being, uh, figurative, we're not... We're not attempting at any kind of art. They're not trying to, and I guess that's okay, but I kind of would like if these were drawn to be little chalices, or these were drawn to be little chests. I uh, forget what this one is, but... Um, so there, you do get a little bit of sterilization here. I mean, I guess I can harvest this to take the tokens, because they more or less overlap. Here's that uh, turn marker that would go around on the back of a tile and the direction marker to show which direction, say, the air was blowing. But again, I just, I would like if it was like a cool, like, like, gust of wind or, or skull or just, or some more color is what I wished for, and I regret that there, there isn't. And, uh, and same with these, like, if we had, like, these are large enough, you could have, like, a furious-looking warrior or just, like, an art of, like, a awesome fist covered in fire instead of like this kind of essentially you know gray chromatic red and white rather iconography to to show oh this person has that power or currently or they gained it or but i guess the consistent iconography is more readable if it's not done in an artistic way but it does make it feel a little bit more uh, sterile in that regard. So I think that for the most part these chits are a downgrade from the old version even though I like the dice in every regard more all three times. I like the wound markers more and I like some of the extra inclusion of other tokens such as the exhausted line and so forth. There's little things in that that they used to just remember the rules but now there's markers for. Likewise um, these used to be cards like punish the evil and so this is for one so if they have this ability boom and it slots in very nice in a satisfying way so if you get on a one and it's not exhausted and you assign it there you can use the punish the evil the ability and it's not a card so it takes up less table space isn't that nice kinda except not because we don't know what punish the evil means right off the bat unless you know it real like reasonably well enough already which we don't so it kind of, a card actually might have just been better, that, and before it would be a card, you know, one, punish the evil. And that's what it does if you, if you land there. Five, prescience. But now we have a separate prescience token that will, I have to, I mean, this will remind me what it does reasonably well, but I still have to look it up the first one, two, three times, or if it's been a while, re-look it up. So let's look at some of the old cards now. Hang on. So here's um, an example of how some of the old cards had just this cool, beautiful color art. It's emotional art. Now this is the back of them, so they can they can do more. But uh, so here's like these aura of precognition, aura of protection. So these are the kinds of things where if you had a, you roll a six and you activate it, but now they're just a little chip that floats into the six area. Which I could get if they were all about, you know, saving space. But if they were all about saving space, 
then why make the hero tiles so ginormous? And they are ginormous in a game that already has huge tiles. Here's the advantage cards, our new instinct cards we're going to look at. Mirror these somewhat, except with the new instinct cards, you'll be able to kind of get more, whereas these represents kind of little small positive events or little items you suddenly pull out and are just basically little uh, surprise events that help the good guys. And the art is cool. It's colorful. It's perhaps overly 90s mo uh, Saturday morning cartoon. Some people may like that. Some people may dislike it. I have mixed feelings. I generally like it, but I do wish it was that much more gritty, grimy, dark, and... Uh, but somehow not losing the color. I don't want to be so gritty, grimy, dark that we lose the color. And I'm afraid that's what the new female warrior skills cards that are now represented through a combination of the icons that give a special ability and, or the, you know, um, tokens. So, uh... The icon gives one of the special abilities that, you know, would appear on in a card that she could have as a skill. Or it'll be assigned to her as part of the scenario to give her a little slot here. And that's that's the equivalent of one of these skills. But you have to have a little, you, you've got to make references for this and print it out. Because otherwise, if it says Weapon Master, then you mean you won't know what that means until the, but the card would just say... So there is something really helpful about simply writing down what the rule is on a card without icons and just in a language. Um, now, the hero ones, we saw how they got way, way bigger. and But the Board of Destiny didn't really get bigger. If anything, maybe it got slightly more modest. Well, the other side... The demons do have something that just explodes in its side, and that is the demon boards now blow up in a way similar to how the hero tiles blew up in size. Now, they're more articulate. They say, you know, it's special power. What exactly what uh, phase does it happen in? What's the special ability? It tells you and it gives you icons that that um, that tell you what it means. So that's really, really handy. But it then begs the question of, well, if they can give you icons and they can... Sorry, I have to plug in my phone. I have memories. If they can give you icons and tell you what it means, then I wish they would have done that everywhere, even if you had to like lift the parchment to see the details of the writing or something like that. But I guess it's all right. So during the activation, you can spend two materia to give them plus one movement, or no, in this case, it's not, they're saying it both ways, they're just using a combination of, of both. But what's this one mean again? The flying one. You literally go anywhere, I forget. So that shows you the, uh, when it takes place, this shows you who it affects. This affects the human warriors and the demons. So until the beginning of the next Infernal Player preparation phase, the human player must reroll every successful hit on this demon once. And now here's where it's explaining it in regular, uh, in regular language than in um, normalized iconography. And so here's where you get, you know, five plus, you use the special ability. So there's kind of, you know, and the hit points here that shows that it has three health total, and that's what it takes to kill it. But strangely, we don't have a spot where it says how much it costs to summon this. Now, we know from the rules it'll say five to summon a demon, three to summon a hellhound who gets the same exact demon screen except it doesn't have this special ability slot they're a little bit simpler instead they have this kind of activation chart so the die you assign shows what stats it'll have for that round a little bit like a human but you have to use the eye of destiny for it this shows it's a hellhound this shows it's a demon 
So all of that's well and good, but I just wish there was more total language cons um, uh, to go with the iconography, the way it is with the special ability having both. It's still, do they look awesome? Absolutely. Is it cool? Are the icons, you're gonna get used to them, and are they gonna work? For sure. But, uh, you know, it just, it'd be nice to just have the language there right off the bat. So, why do I say these are big increase? Because before, interestingly, strangely, the demon warriors for both hellhounds and uh, the big demons had these cards. This is this card is the whole the whole thing here, and it tells you its special ability, its stats, it has art. And it tells you it's health. Here we have the Hellhounds from the first uh, first expansion. And it is cool that they have first expansion stuff in here. And so, oh, well, you get a different special ability depending on how you assign it. And it, it just tells you what that is. And a little spot for assigning the die to it as well. Even though it's not in a cool three-dimensional dashboard. Which was a shame with this first edition expansion it kind of reminded you oh yeah you didn't really need these but they were just cool and overkill and they got you spoiled and now they could have just done it with cards like with the hellhounds so having um the board of destiny uh and having these big demon ones makes it take up more room and again now the heroes taking up a lot more room with all of these so i just don't know how easily it'll get to a lot of tables without side tables being added. Because, because of the individual demons having larger boards and because of the individual heroes, even though the uh, board of destiny is, and is the same, more or less, and the room tiles are just as large as before. So speaking of which, we saw the old room tiles. Let's look at them uh, for the new one here we have different from what I was complaining about with the new version here is from the new edition and we have beautiful cool colorful but for the regular uh, tile we see that instead of this kind of light brown we go to this darker orangey brown I actually think I like that more now that I'm looking at it more regularly let's Try to see some variety. It's not that shuffled yet, obviously. Yeah, you know, I'll tell you, at first I was um, less certain about it and thought they were a little bit too muted. But I think that's just what my complaint is for some other elements, like the little chips or chits. I think that these, um, these are just as cool, if not cooler, than the, the old edition. So here's another old edition tile. Here's some more new edition tiles. So I think we are having enough color and visual interest that I'm excited by it. I, I think in terms of art style, what I really would have wanted was something in between the kind of cartoony and the kind of, uh, you know, more uh, grim dark fantasy art like this. Something that looked basically like the cover of the boxes. If everything could have looked kind of like this sort of thing, that would be my perfect world. But the world is not perfect. It is Hell Dorado. So here we had those iconographic chits and tokens instead of those other ones. Now, here we have item cards. And there are item cards in the first edition. And these are fine. They're nothing to write home about, but at least there's some art. There's not a huge variety of them. But, uh... Sorry, I'm struggling to find them for the, uh... for the new edition. But just to give you a comparison of art differences, you can see that. Let 
So uh, a little bit more of the realistic look, maybe a little less total art. It's just there's no kind of background to it. But it's there. Uh, it's art. And it looks cool. I sleeve these and put them in trays and stuff. It doesn't come with these plastic trays, by the way. Now, in the new version, this is where a lot of people complain, and I actually don't fault them for complaining. It doesn't bother me that much, but I can see why they would want it. You're, you're getting this expensive board game. It's well designed, it's cool. Here's your advantage cards for human player. It kind of combines together like events, like advantage, it's now called instinct, as well as some other kind of cards condensed together. And what's cool is it has multi-purpose. For each one, you can use it to either change the result of a die from one result to the result it says, or use a special ability. So it gives you a meaningful choice. That wasn't in the first edition. I like that, but no art. Too bad. I do think that's a shame. And now they made them extra small. Why make these cards extra small? To save table space? Why couldn't we have done that with the demon boards for individual demons or for the human warrior boards? So you can use this for its ability, intuition, the warrior gains the prescience gift. Uh, and by the way, is that until end of turn? Because this card will go away at the end of, the, until the next preparation round for the human player. But does that mean the special ability will go away? I think it does, because the card goes away. And I think the, the rule book says, therefore the effect goes away, I believe. But it would be nice if they would have said, until the end of the round, or otherwise this is just implied that it's permanent. Okay, so not shuffled, but um, yeah, no art. And part of the reasoning for that was we don't we want to focus on the the cool miniatures and the room tiles. We don't want you to be spending a lot of time looking at the cards. They're not hanging around. They're just there temporarily. But still, you know, you could have given us regular sized cards that had multi purpose and had one cool piece of art. But I guess you don't want the art upside down if you're using the other side of it. I can see that reasoning. Run, the warrior gains plus one movement. Nice. Uh, I'm pretty sure they must mean until the next round, because otherwise your various abilities would add up too much. And, and the fact that they're called instinct card implies. I have a video where I read the rule book aloud, so I should know all the rules, but I, I don't. So that's the human player's instinct cards. These are really the only cards besides items they have to worry about. So they have to worry about more iconography, more little chips and tokens to keep track of, but less cards to keep track of. So I guess I'm fine with that. I just wish there was more obvious and explanatory language used in describing what the tokens and chits do. Whereas with the cards, because they printed these in both languages, they were fine with just explaining what the card does instead of doing it all through iconography. And this is, I mean, I would, again, I would like these cards to be larger and have art in an ideal world. That's how it should be. But if you're like, all right, art is expensive to do it the way we want. We won't have that many. And the, yeah, by the way, these are obviously the dark cards, the bad guy player. Getting these as part of the, you know, threat, the destiny, dark destiny cards. Um, and they're cool, and I like the the red mixed with the black and white looks cooler than just the white and black or whatever of the uh, I don't know. I just a little art for that in a larger card, you know, be great. But it's fine. It's fine. I think the cards I understand more and I get more. There's a lot more chaos in the old world has no art on the cards but uh, I think I just would have liked more like gooey or weird looking graphic design or even if it was standardized along all of the cards just to kind of distract you from the fact that there's no art kind of similar to what chaos in the old world did I really liked that even though there's no art on the chaos cards you don't notice and uh, these are some more of the new uh, dungeon tiles room tiles Cavern tiles, and I, actually, the more I look at them, the more I'm 
hunkering down on my statement that I think that they're an improvement. I think the new version just has cooler looking room tiles. I think that they're BA, dark, but still colorful, interesting, and have kind of a, a sense of a violence menace behind them that is uh, more present to me than was in the first edition. So these are a step up, I feel. So, so far, big steps up are the dice and the room tiles, in my view only, and uh, wound markers as well. So that's, that's nothing to sneeze at. That's a few... A few elements. Okay. So we kind of have a general idea of how the cards are different, how the room tiles are different, how the chips and chits are different, and uh, yeah, the cards and card art and everything. So let's now let's look at some of the the old figures, the miniatures. Now here is where big disclaimer: these came pre-painted, but I touched them up by like adding specks of blood and then doing a bad job of putting a wash on them. From shade that was too old so they're more black and speckled up and shaded and all that all right there's more chocolate lights in here but they look the same more or less so this and also gloss spray over them that I put so they won't be this glossy or shinier or have the little extra elements but they would be painted basically the same except for the dark splotchy like grit that I put on them so here's like old troglodyte except for my weird decision to put that kind of shade on in that way I think it's cool I like it but it's not going to show off with um, any kind of clever design this is from the first edition features this guy and uh, I actually like him a lot but I hope that they get him to come back with an expansion in the second edition because he the first edition uh, uh, excuse me the first expansion for the first edition was about featuring the hellhounds and the female warriors who are really really awesome as well but and that's both in the new version the new version has the Hellhounds, it has the Female Warriors, it has everything from the first expansion. But it doesn't have the smaller second expansion, which is all about just this one new miniature, the Kardakaya, who works as kind of a special combo of being his own entire team. Here's the first edition Female Warrior, again, from the first expansion, and re-envisioned. Here is our chief character, who's pretty much always in it, as a grime and gloss to them, but the painting is basically the same. And this is the Redeemer, and I like how he looks a lot in the first edition. I like his, uh, the nature of his hammer. It's a little bit more cartoony, a little bit more fantasy. But I think that they look, they look great. Um, the, the Brute, I think it was clever that they gave him kind of this weapon that's also a shovel with the idea that you know it, it's a pickaxe mixed with a shovel so you can dig as needed i love the idea of these brutal criminals having a chance to redeem themselves this didn't come with it i bought this because i wanted more demons so that's the big disadvantage of the first game is that all of the main demons no matter what scenario you're playing with no matter what demon card you're playing against it'll show different cool art of different demons in the first edition they're all represented by this one miniature. Now, he's really cool. I added a little stuff to him, but basically he would look like this. And he looks awesome, but he's not that huge, so he's not that threatening in terms of sheer size. And there's just a, it's just one model, which makes finding him easier. But you're just using, in the base game of the first edition, this demon and these troglodytes, and that's it. So there's not a variety of miniatures in the base game of the first edition, but they did come pre-painted. And so I like them a lot. I wish they had included more variety. So like I went out and sought this because I was trying to find more demon figures to, um, 
to add into the game to take the place of more different demon cards as you saw earlier but uh in the second edition they're, they're simply going to come with all that so let's look at the miniatures of the second edition now they come in these plastic wheel shaped bins And right off the bat, you'll notice that we're going for, we're going for a different look. So they're not painted. That's a big downside, unless you just didn't like the painting before and you always paint your own anyway. Now I am planning, planning on painting these, but still, coming pre-painted is a bonus. So here's an old hellhound, here's a new hellhound. One thing I will say is that the new size justifies the large room tiles that both editions have more to me and that's so that's just hellhounds there uh, let's compare troglodyte here is an old troglodyte again with my weird shade job and here is a new troglodyte i like the gross weird edition of the new arm i like that it's a little bit bigger I think all of that's really, really cool. Uh, and also, there is a tough troglodyte token in the first edition that you could you could use to indicate, oh, this troglodyte has upgraded stats and a frenzy special ability and so forth. Now, there's just a separate mini to indicate tough troglodyte. And I like that. I like that we're getting more minis. And I think it's worth the trade-off that they're more and instead of painted, because we can paint them on our own, but we can't really make the models on our own without special, special skills. So let's compare some more characters. So one of the female w warriors. Here is one of the scouts, formerly Blades for Hire. So I, I think that I just like these m more in general. Here's the old Blade for Hire. Oops, let me focus on him. Mm. So you you kind of get an example of how different they are. I think the miniatures, miniatures are basically an improvement. Now the Brutes justify their name and and at least in this case, armor more. Before, you had two brutes, two scouts. They had the same figure. But now, you have it so that instead of just being, you know, blonde hair or brown hair, that's that brute. And here's the other brute. He's got a chance to fight and die to redeem himself for his crimes he's committed. I like that. That convicted convicts either because they want to go out in a blaze of glory and they're condemned to die anyway or they're just condemned to prison and they want to redeem themselves by fighting it's kind of weirdly darkly beautiful in its way these new brutes are just better than the old brutes i think even though i love the shovel pickaxe thing this is uh darkly interesting and and I like that there's just more armor on him, because even if he was real beefy before, without a lot of armor, his toughness and difficulty to hit made less sense to me. So here we have um, another scout, and the fact that they have different models for each instead of, you know, blonde, uh, blonde hair or brown, that's better to me. The Redeemer, I actually like some elements about his old edition more. So the Redeemer is a guy you're going to see a lot of. I like that he's kind of shiny and heroic, kind of cartoony. Um, and heroic looking with his, with his cape like that and the lantern leading the way. Here's the new Redeemer. Now, obviously, being not painted is part of this. But I actually just find him a little bit less obviously glorious. In making him more gritty and realistic, we took away a little bit of his magic, I think. Which is okay, but 
hopefully with painting we can make up for it. The hammer, for instance, it becomes more real, but a little less magic. But I love the huge book on his back that at once is kind of a back shield, but also is, you know, gives him blessing power and aura and spells in that regard and is uh, a testament to, to faith and uh, that's power that protects him in that regard. Then for some of the big demons, this is where it's quite different. We just have... larger miniatures as well. They're cool miniatures, they're larger, they make more sense of having, now you can actually have guys fighting in here and at least the room tile feels justified, at least somewhat, because now we can be, we can actually feel claustrophobic in the sense of how can we fit three on each side to fight in here? Well, they would be pretty closed and tight, good, makes sense. That's how it should be. So I like that big guy. And that's just one of the demons. Now, each individual demon has a unique miniature. I really like that a lot. We've got this torturer guy. Got this big, savage-looking guy. This grotesque, ugh, almost obscene-looking... Um, profane thing and we have two um hellhounds that are unique the new hellhounds are unique and they look a little bit less obviously like just big wolves and more mm, more monstrous there we go and i like that i like that they're a little less sympathetic in a way so i'm a big fan of that this, per this one's featured on some cover art. I love this guy on his throne like that. And this one, real wonderfully grotesque, just like the other one, but even larger. So I love how perverse these guys are. That's awesome. That's cool. And just as we had um, two hellhounds, now they're unique hellhounds. They look different from each other. Um, like, here's the other one. Just as we had that, one of the big demons in the first edition, first expansion, was this, you know, Cerberus thing, kind of like a hellhound in form and shape, but officially a demon, not a hellhound, whereas hellhounds are more like henchmen, lieutenants, whereas the demon is the main big baddie. And he, he, instead of just being represented by that same kind of somewhat minotaur-like miniature, this one has its own dedicated miniature that is of the appropriate size and ferocity. And I think, given the right colorful, goopy, gooky, yeah, it's not real words there, but just grotesque, awesome paint job, these can pop even more than in the first edition. So you're getting more, uh, more, so it'll take longer to find the one you need, but not that much longer. There's just kind of two trays here. You'll grab it, and since you're only having up to two hellhounds and basically one or two demons in a given scenario, you don't have to find a whole bunch each time. You're basically just mostly pulling out troglodytes, and you can grab them, you can grab them easily. Uh, so I just think that the miniature area side of things is, for the most part, a massive improvement. So that's uh, basically a comparison on most of the major components or types of components in the first edition versus second edition. My overall judgment, you can make your own determination based off what you saw here, is I think that the room tiles are basically an improvement. Um, even though there's some things I like about the first edition room tiles, I think that it's a weird, unfortunate shame that the uh, the boards for the individual demons are so unnecessarily uh, inflated in size. And same with the hero dashboards because it's going to make it so you're going to have to, have to play on the floor more often, potentially, if you're me, for example. But I'm, I basically am fine with that. 
I like the new wounds markers. I like the new dice we have dedicated. Good guy dice we have dead uh, for activation there in graves. They're three dimensional in that regard. Uh, we've got cool new big chunky awesome thematic combat dice and we have plenty for both sides. So I don't like the new lack of card art, how sterile some of the tokens and things can can be. I don't like that it's not pre-painted, but that can be alleviated. But basically, overall, I think when everything is set out, when you play the game from front to back, the overall experience will feel more popping with the second edition, even though there are some components that when you're first looking at at them in the second edition seem more sterile and um, kind of uh, n neutralized than in the first edition. Despite that, I think overall, in general, it's going to have more table presence for yourself and people watching than the first edition. But honestly, I can see enough benefits in either that if you only own one, I think you'll have a blast. I don't see enough detriments with the losses in the old dive, uh, Board of Destiny to the new Board of Destiny that it warrants a real huge mechanistic strategic shift. I think you can still kind of save dice from one round to the next with how they with how they manage that. But um, the biggest downside of the new version is the the table space being even even larger still. And that is too bad. Oh, here it is. I was looking for it. I put it over here, of course. Uh, and the fact that the new demon dashboard uh, and a few other areas have a little bit less explanatory elements and more iconography, despite the fact that they make these dashboards universal enough so you could take this off and then slip this out and a new faction could come in the future, and that's cool. So then maybe you'll learn the icon so well that you'll, you'll like that. I'm not sure. Thanks very much for watching this video. Sorry I'm not that good at these kinds of videos, nor am I that good at keeping the camera steady. But despite all that, I appreciate you checking out these with me. They both feel cool. They both have cool kinesthetic tactile qualities. There's a thickness and robustness to the pieces on and both versions and... Um, uh, provided one has printed out the appropriate reference uh, cards uh, or reference pages once they're available or someone makes them available for what the special abilities are and uh, things like, like this. What the icons and so forth I mean that could be on the dashboard of destiny and uh and just like a basic kind of turn round order thing, we just need a we just need like a, a big one page reference page that both sides can have. And then I think that's all we need. Oh, and for the and the room tiles as well, because the room tiles often will have a symbol here, and you won't know what that means. So you'll have to you'll have to look that up, and that's in the in the back of the book. And, uh, but that's the same as the first edition when it comes to room tiles. You didn't know what it meant, so you had to, you had to look up, oh, what's that do? So you had a reference card. So it, all of it, in a weird way, makes the game seem more complex than it is. It's actually a pretty light, pretty simple game that after playing it one or two rounds will feel like a breeze as far as complexity. And yet it, it, it overly complicates itself in its appearance, I suppose. All right, well, again, thank you for bearing with me. That's me. I'm Michael Eldridge. I appreciate you. I appreciate your time. And I'll see you in my other videos if you decide to stick around and like or subscribe. I'd appreciate it.